Hello, it's Felicity from Get Your Rock Out, talking to the legend that is Wednesday 13. Legend? <laughs> How are you doing today? A leg end is what I am. A leg end. A leg end, not a Brilliant. legend. <laughs> but uh, it's going good. Uh, third day of the tour, we're doing eight in a row over here, which is kind of not healthy, especially <laughs> when we take care of ourselves. Yeah. But we could use a day off here and there. But uh, but no, it's been great. I love playing the UK. I didn't get to do a full UK tour last year when we did mm -hmm. London on Halloween. So uh, it just seems that kids are excited for it. We left them waiting for a year when I normally here twice a year. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's good. So why the delay this time? Was it just the recording, getting stuff out, and finishing off? Um, well, I mean, last year, it was also a thing too. Like I've, I've been playing here every year, probably twice a year for eleven and a half years, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, so I think it was good to give a little, little breather in between there. <laughs> you know, there's so many bands touring around all the time as well, and you know, just I didn't want to wear my welcome out. So it was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. We got to take a little bit of time off from here last year, but we also were busy because we were touring. I did the EP last year. We did the new record. Um, so, But it was all getting geared up because I knew 2013 had to be the year <laughs> yeah. to do it. So yeah. I kind of just wanted to you know, get the, get the ball rolling and build the momentum up, and here we are. Balls. <laughs> Brilliant. And yeah, it's the <laughs> third night of the tour so far. Yeah. Uh, first two, how were they? Great. Um, Brilliant. You know, and again, it, Usually it takes a couple shows mm. to get worked because like we new equipment here we rent gear we come over here so but uh but again the, both shows have been great so far like last night was insane it was a little tiny place and just people were just jumping off the stage and just it was just like what the hell you know it's a different <laughs> world from from the states and but our states shows are getting really good as well because we've been touring there a lot now too mm. so uh but again the UK is just it's awesome. This has been my home for the first place that ever embraced what I did, wow. and you know, and wow. you know, ever since Murder Dolls, that's pretty much been my my home. Wow! So lots of respect for the English fans. Then. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. This has been my again. This has been my home. I've been I've been to England more than I've been back to North Carolina, where I'm from, actually. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it seems what, like. You know, what do you think the difference is? Why are the kind of UK fans much more receptive? What do you think causes that? I don't know if it was necessarily. Just a UK thing. I think what happened with Murder Dolls, because that was when it happened, um, was we had, you know, the UK is a smaller place. Yeah. We had the label here that could reach the outlets we needed a lot yes. better. Whereas the states, yeah. you got a giant place, and there's there's not the same kind of magazines in in America. And you know, it was just I think it was just a timing thing. I think it just kind of did okay in America. But the UK, it was just the right time, right place, and no one was doing what we were doing. It was the end of new metal, and we were just like this whole, this whole fucking just new monster, you know. And it was a combination of just punk and glam, and you know, and it was it was fresh for people, you know. And uh, so, not, and it's where it happened. I think just over the years, it's, you know, and again, it's not the same fans from back then because I'm seeing younger kids. There's no yeah, way, you know. It's so, so many. You've got hugely young audience. So these shows and as they well, keep and brilliant. they keep getting younger, and the and the older fans are just kind of going back to the bar now, but they're still there too, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, uh, so it's it's a cool thing. I've been really fortunate to keep this going, you know, and 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 have fans every time. So it's it's not a bad problem to have. <laughs> no, most definitely. I yeah. think it's quite quite a good problem to yes. have, really, in the grand scheme of things. Good problems. problems. Mm. <laughs> um, the Dixie Dad, let's talk all about it. Let's talk. Brilliant. Um, it's fantastic. It's Thank you. not been out long at all. Nope. Um, but, I mean, every review I've seen of it so far has been really, really positive. Are you I know, me too. <laughs> I was just telling someone earlier, I was like, this is probably the most well received release I've ever put out. Wow. I mean, and I read everything. I troll myself online. <laughs> I know everything on YouTube, everything. I mean, I know everything online, and, you know, like my last record, you know, Calling All Corpses, it got good reviews, and it got bad reviews, and all my records have did that, you know, and, uh, but this is the first one that no one's giving me shit, <laughs> you know, so it's a, it's a cool feeling, you know, and it's, you know, and as much as I could sit there and say, oh, I don't care if, if the biggest magazine, if Metal Hammer and Kring hated it. I, if, if I said that, would be honest. It's, it's awesome when you hear a big magazine yeah. praise you. It, it feels good too. So, but again, I wouldn't let that sway it if if, if it was getting yeah. beat up. Mm -hmm. But it does feel good to have people saying good things about you constantly, and that's <laughs> not normal for me. I'm usually <laughs> taking shit all the time. So, and from reaction, has that been just as positive as kind of the official reviews? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's one of those things. I didn't want to say too much, but I kept before the people heard the record. I kept going, well, "What's it like?" And I was like, "Well." I think it's closer to my first album, Transylvania, which some people hold that as the sacred one I did. 
and I was like, man, I hope I'm not building this up to be <laughs> like, you know, because I kept saying this is my, I think this is my best record, and you know, I think it's similar to that, and that's exactly what I've heard. It was like, dude, this is your best record. It's just like the first, or it's like the first yeah. one, but it's different. And <laughs> so uh, it feels good to know that I, that I said what I said, and people reacted the same way. I mean, what's made the difference for you? I mean, what's made it, do you think, your best record to date? Oh, it's just, you know, again, not that I didn't like my past. I mean, I, I loved everything I, I put out, but, you know, there's just certain times you'll do certain recordings, and they just, you know, di they feel different to you. And, you know, like when we were recording this, we knew, like, early on, we just first started hearing, like, this, the, the playbacks and stuff. We were just like, oh, dude, this is awesome. You know, and uh, and so, it, and again, it's I think, what, it, what it's been is just it's, it takes years of experience and you know for me it's taken me 10 years to figure out what the fuck I'm doing <laughs> and you know and now I feel like I finally got a grasp on it you know and and that's why I feel that this record took that next level that we needed to you know we've I've had the same lineup you know for a long time now and like you know we play constantly so over the years I always had a different guitar player here or a different bass player not to take away anything from those guys but it just wasn't consistent yeah. and now I see what it, how much it means to have a band that plays together mm -hmm. every day and uh, you know so that's uh, that's what's different for me this time is that I've got the same lineup I've got my mind focused on it yeah. and I just I feel like there's I know what I do now, if that makes any yes, sense. Yes, completely. And you've got so much other stuff on the go as well. Um, the film that you're doing, mm -hmm. I've heard rumours that this is also going to be called The Dixie Dad. Yes. Fantastic yes. stuff. Are you going to be, I mean, you know, again, tell us all about it. Are you going to be using the album as a soundtrack of in parts, or...? I, I don't know yet. It's still in the early stages, and, uh, I mean, it really is. It's, just, it's talk right now, but it's, <laughs> it is a plan that I'm going to do this. And, uh, you know, as far as, like, the storyline on it, I mean, it's... You can listen to the Dixie Dead lyrics and hear the the coming attractions trailer before it, and kind of get an idea of what it's going to be. It's not going to be a, you know, I'm not looking at making a theatrical release or anything <laughs> like that. When people go, oh, you're making a movie, so it'd be like Rob Zombie. It'd be in the, like, no, you like the DVD, <laughs> you know. Period. If it does any more out of that, great. You know, I've never made a movie before. I don't know what it's going to be like. But again, I never made a record before, and I did that, and people got behind it. So, um, you know, we'll we'll see what happens with it. Uh, you know, it's still in the early stages, but um, as far as when I do the movie, though, um, there will be a soundtrack with it, but it won't be like a full Wednesday record. There may be okay. a couple songs here and there, but it's, it's still in the early stages, so I don't really know that what I'm talking about even makes sense right now. So, But it, it will happen, and I'm going to get around to it, and uh, that'll probably be before the next Wednesday record will be in the movie. Oh, okay, brilliant. So. I mean, how old were you when you started getting into all the kind of horror side of stuff? Since I can remember. When no. I was four, my, my earliest memory was when I was four years old, because I remember the house I lived in at the time, and, um, yeah, just I just was, since I can remember, you know, I was in love with the television. Mm -hmm. When I saw the television, it was, you could not get me out in front of it. And when I was a kid, they were still showing Adam's Family, they were still showing the Monsters on repeats all, all the time. I watched that, and I was obsessed with Scooby-Doo, <laughs> Casper. I loved all the ghost stuff, you know, And uh, but I loved G.I. Joe as well. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed natural to me. It wasn't ever weird to be into horror yeah. movies. And it's funny, because like now, entertainment in you know modern times right now, everything's Walking Dead. Twilight, vampires, werewolves, zombies, mm -hmm. all this, and it kind of was horror when I, when I, you know, when I was a kid too. So yeah. this took a little break. Now it's kind of coming back again. So to me, it was it's been there since day one, <laughs> you know. And when I finally started learning how to play music and write stuff, sing what you know about Rambo, <laughs> Dracula, and here I am, 36 years old, still singing about Rambo <laughs> and fucking Dracula. So some things never change. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, I guess, musically, you couldn't really see yourself doing anything else, any other directions? You've not really oh, got well, a secret longing for jazz? Well, I... No, no. <laughs> it's actually it's jazz. It's a soft J. Um, and I don't like it. <laughs> but, uh, no, the, the cool thing that I'm really happy that w what I've done is I never followed a blueprint because yeah. there was no blueprint to what I did. Mm. You, know, um, you know, I listen to everything and I incorporate everything. In the Dixie Dead album, you can hear the musical style of everything because there's 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 a there's the punk stuff on there there's the you know in your face kind of just hard rock and then there's metal songs on there as well so it just shows what i listen to and every record i make from this point on i don't have a there's no rule book to it we can have a song that's 
semi slayer, and then we can have a song that's you know semi you know glam rock. And I've always walked that fine line, and it, and it and it works for me. You know, my fans don't. You know, I thought maybe this record was going to be too heavy for the fans, yeah. and they everyone loves it. So <laughs> that that's you know as far as like trying to new directions. I mean, I, I have my other project, my Bourbon Crow thing, mm -hmm. which is totally different direction. And um, but as far as like trying to tackle anything else. I don't really have any. I'm not going to be rapping anytime soon. Um, so, I hate to, hate to break it to you. But we were all hoping for that as well, yeah, honestly. I, uh, Sad. I don't rap. <laughs> you should try it one day. It could turn into the best thing that well, you've ever brought out. The, oh, the, well, there is, there is the, uh, there was a, a, like a horror rap band. I can't remember what they were, what they were called. What was that rap, what was that band called? No, there was a there was a graveyard band or like really yeah, I don't know, I probably hate no. it too. There was only one rap band, the Ghetto Boys. Spook yeah, it's like hip hop but it's spooky. Yeah, spook hop. <laughs> <laughs> it's a genre, it's a genre that should exist really. If it doesn't already, it should. Yeah, spook hop. Yeah, you heard it here first. <laughs> I mean, speaking of which. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> yeah, no, speaking, each other. speaking of which, there are so many different subgenres now in the metal scene. I mean, do you think that the kind of the music needs to change and progress like it does, or do you think that actually the kind of back to basic stuff is? I, you know, I've never liked, you know, to me there's heavy metal and there's hard rock and then there's just you know what I mean. But when you start breaking out like, oh, this is this is boot core, this is metal core, this is jazz core. You know, I don't under and even when I get called, you know, horror punk, I'm like, I, are we really punk? I maybe yeah. was kind of more punk years and years ago, but I still get that tag. So I just tags are, are stupid, and you know, again, I mean, I, I'm a fan of music and I love hearing new things. Mm -hmm. And you know, like uh, I remember when I first heard Corn the first time, nobody did that, and it was wow, like, whoa, yeah. you know. And then like we've been listening to the band Go Gojira. You know, and I Brilliant. love them, and I'm like, I've never heard bands play like that. So there's always bands that just come out of the blue and go, where the fuck do they come from? <laughs> and you'll have a hundred other bands that come out, of, and you go, I wish you would go back where you came from, because you suck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, up and coming bands at the moment, who are you kind of watching out for? Uh, who's up and coming bands? It's, it's funny, I'll go, up and coming bands, this guys that have been touring as long as I have. <laughs> uh, but I don't, who's... Fighters. Yeah, there's a there's a band in America called the Biters that are uh, just awesome. They they sound like everything from Thin Lizzy to like old glam rock, ACDC. Yeah. Like they're just they got it figured out. And every single song they have sounds like a hit to me. Wow. So that's probably the only up and coming young band that I know. And everything else is just bands kind of our that we tour with really? and stuff. Yeah. You know, like uh, you know, uh, like I mentioned Gojira. We love that band. Ghost, mm -hmm. Troy, our bass player, loves them the most. Uh, <laughs> They're touring with Gajera soon, of course. Oh, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, yeah, we're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. the UK. Yeah, we just we saw that, that ad for that. But, uh, but yeah, there's all kind of stuff. I mean, uh, my, my favorite band in the past three or four years is, is Killing Joke. And yeah. I've never listened to them before, prior to that, but I'm completely obsessed with it. It probably isn't a day you don't hear a Killing Joke song in the dressing room. Brilliant. And the next kind of six to 12 months, what can we expect from you? Uh, well, lots of rain, partly cloudy. Uh, <laughs> It's going, get, it's going to get, going to get cold around December, and uh, it's going to be hot in August, <laughs> and uh, that's, that's your six months right there. Fantastic. Thank you. And then uh, 2014. And then, you know. <laughs> now, uh, we're just going to keep touring. We have a U.S. tour this summer. We're going to go out for a long run there, and then uh, we're hoping to go to Australia for Halloween this year, and then that after that, brilliant. we'll be right back over here if all goes well and do a UK run and then do a full European run so uh, and then uh, hopefully in between all of that I'll have time to go film my Dixie Dead movie fantastic and that's it that's pretty <laughs> much the, the six month plan wonderful so plenty to look forward to from yes, you yes constantly so, busy brilliant glad to hear it best way for it um, have an absolutely amazing show tonight thank you thank you so much but for don't tell me what to do <laughs> Yeah, I hope it's, it's crap, honest. <laughs> but, but thank you, and we will look forward to seeing you back here very soon. As Rick Flair would say. Woo! <laughs>